retired in Mexico, and we ask one question on this channel, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? Now, a lot of people, young and old, they think the old music is better, but I'm not so sure. And today, we're going to count down my 30 favorite albums of the year 2001. And let me start with some uh, omissions that you guys might be looking for. Uh, albums that I mostly like, so I'll talk about, about them in the order that I like them. Uh, first of all, uh, after doing some reactions on this channel, I made one change. This is a list that I did last year, and I had not ranked it. It was just my 30 favorite albums. And uh, anyhow, uh, I added one based on our reactions. And oh, real quick, I want to say, you know, I'm doing this outdoors because my webcam died. And I know there's a lot of background noise and traffic. It's one reason I'm not doing a reaction today and doing an original content video. It'd be a little easier just to talk. But uh, anyhow, the album that I bumped to make room for this was the debut album by Stephen Malcolm, Malcolmus and the Hicks, uh, Stephen Malcolmus from Pavement, so that got bumped, that'd probably be number 31. And then uh, another album that I like quite a bit is The Shins, This Inverted World, or O Inverted World, I guess it's called, and that would be maybe around 32 on my list. And then uh, someone we hit up on the channel that I like quite a bit, the microphones, uh, maybe number 33 on my list. So I like that album quite a bit too. So the Shins, the microphones, and Stephen Malcolmus just barely missed the list. And then two really popular albums that did not make my list because I'm just not crazy about the albums. One is The Strokes, Is This It? I like the Strokes fine. I did a video called Five Overrated Bands of the 21st Century, and I talk a little bit on there about how I feel about the Strokes. Band I like. I don't dislike them at all. I just, I just don't get, uh, I guess I just don't get it. You know, it's to me, um, maybe being an older person, I hear all the influences, and it sounds just a tad derivative to me, so... Uh, but still a good band and I like them. And then the biggest omission is from an album that I have to admit I really don't like. Uh, sorry if it's one of your favorite albums of 2001. I'm just not a big fan of Daft Punk's Discovery. That made a lot of people's top five or top ten. And uh, that's omitted on here. So let's go ahead and get started with the countdown. Let me pull up my spreadsheet here. Coming in at number 30 is a band I really, really like, uh, but this is not my favorite album by them. This is the band, the slowcore band from Minnesota, Low, Things We Lost in the Fire. And I think th the reason it's not higher on my list, there's just something about Steve Albini's production. It's just so straight and dry, and I respect it, uh, but I like the production on some of their later works, so... That's it. Love the band Low, uh, but I would, but uh, some of their subsequent albums will rate higher on my future lists as we continue this series. So, coming in at number thirty, Low, Things We Lost in the Fire. Coming in at twenty-nine and twenty-eight are two albums that were both Mercury Prize nominees. So, coming in at number twenty-nine, not a well-known person, Ed. Harcourt. He's English, and his uh, debut album was called Here Be Monsters, and I like this album quite a bit. Um, if you haven't checked out Ed, Har Ed Harcourt, he's a really good musician. I like him, and he's a, just a singer-songwriter, but he's a good lyricist, and he's got some interesting songs, so check out Here Be Monsters, Mercury Prize nominee. Coming in at number 28, Zero Seven, Simple Things. Another uh, British band that was Mercury Prize nominated. Uh, there's a bunch of singers on here, including Sia. And one thing I'll say about this album is I want to use a couple words that I never use. You know, you always hear people on uh, reaction videos, they say, oh, that song has a really nice vibe. 
or that's really chill. And you don't hear me use those words very often on this channel, but when I listen to Zero Seven, it's got a nice vibe and it's really chill. <laughs> so I'm going to use those words because they're very specific for what I want to say. Uh, I don't know, just an album that puts me in kind of a dreamy mood. Uh, really do like Zero Seven. Just, um, it's not trip hop exactly, but it just kind of hits that same spot for me. Like a band like, say, Morchiba does. It's just, uh, or Massive Attack. They just hit, they kind of hit those notes for me. Coming in at number 27 is another debut album and this one from the band Elbow. I'm a big Elbow fan. Uh, Asleep in the Back debut, not as strong as a couple subsequent albums they would do, but I, I really like this album. Uh, it's been criticized a little bit for being one note and I would agree with that. It's almost all mid-tempo songs. So yeah, I mean, all music gives it three stars. They don't care for that album at all, at all but on Metacritic it scored an 82, so uh, the critics were divided on this, but my favorite song on here is called Powder Blue, and it's uh, about two addicts. Really interesting song with an emotional vocal delivery, and Guy Garvey holds this one note for a really, really long time. It's so emotional. And I think he's one of the best lyricists of the 21st century. So, a uh, great album. Coming in at number 26 is a solo album from a member of the Stone Roses, the singer Ian Brown. Now, this album, Music of the Spheres, it really split people. Uh, Metacritic only gave it 63. Uh, all music, four stars. It was not a well-loved album by everybody, but I like this because it's got one foot in Manchester and it's got another foot in spirituality. And it's very interesting and uh, I love the song F-E-A-R where he just rattles off a bunch of things that F-E-A-R could stand for. And really, uh, I think an underrated album. Ian Brown, Music of the Spheres. Coming in at number 25 is another album that split the critics. And I think it's because it was a late album, late effort by them, and so people compared it to their earlier work. But I believe you should look at an album on its own and not really compare it to prior work. Sometimes you can't help but do that. But I really like this 2001 album by Echo and the Bunnymen called Flowers. And I think this is a really underrated album. Uh, it's got some tracks that I really, really love. And it's got a nice, uh, kind of like the Zero Seven. It's got kind of a, just that kind of trippy feel to it. And, uh, like I say, I think it was, uh, you know, all music gave it three and a half stars. And everyone compared it to their earlier work. But I think standing alone, if they had come out of the vortex and uh, done this album without any previous work, people would have rated it higher. So number 25, Echo and the Bunny Men Flowers. Coming in at number 24, something a little different, someone I'm not a big fan of, uh, just uh, not a big fan of her earlier work. I watched her as a kid when my dad used to watch the Porter Wagner show where she got her debut. And this is Dolly Parton. Now she put out an, a bluegrass album on Sugar Hill Records called Little Sparrow. And this is really, really, really well played. It's got musicians like Alison Krauss on it, Nickel Creek. It's just got top-notch musicians. It's got, um, uh, there's just a whole bunch of people on there. I can't remember off the top of my head, but if you go to Wikipedia, wow, ton of uh, musicians on here. And she does uh, about half originals, and then she does some covers. One of the more interesting covers that she does is Collective Soul's Shine. And I like her version better than Collective Soul. 
and maybe that's not saying a lot but just a great great bluegrass album I like uh, Americana so I make no apologies <laughs> Dolly Parton Little Sparrow coming in at number 22 is a dance album by a British duo and this is Basement Jacks their album Rudy and this is just a really fun album with dance beats and I like dance music and this one is uh, you know dance music with lots of vocals and if you're familiar with Basement Jacks they're they're fun they had two really good albums in my estimation and this is one of them so Rudy by Basement Jacks coming in at number 21 is a tribute album Timeless Hank Williams tribute Hank Williams 1940s and 50s uh, died at 29 years old uh, one of the greatest songwriters in uh, in the 20th century for sure all stuff way before I was born uh, this album, you know, got three stars on all music, but if you, re if you read the review, they rave about it. So it's just one of those things where sometimes what they say and what they rank don't match. I think this is a great album. It features, uh, among other artists, it, re it features Beck, Keith Richards, Johnny Cash, Emmy Lou Harris, Bob Dylan, and Ryan Adams and Lucinda Williams. Just a, a stellar lineup of people doing classic Hank Williams songs like um, Cold Cold Heart and um, you know all of his greatest songs. So I really enjoy this album. I think it stood the test of time. And you just got top-notch artists doing top-notch songs. Love it. Coming in at number 20, uh, for people who think I might not be a f big fan of instrumental post-rock, uh, I like the band out of Chicago called Tortoise quite a bit, and they put out an al album called Standards. It's uh, all instrumental, and this is really good stuff. So I don't know if you're familiar with Tortoise, but man, good, good instrumental rock and to me they're right up there with bands like Godspeed You Black Emperor and Explosions in the Sky. This is kind of in that territory and um, Standards is an album that got good reviews. It wasn't uh, loved or praised but it's good. It's a good album and I enjoy it quite a bit. It always, always sounds good to me. Tortoise from Chicago. Coming in at number, uh, oh wow, this is, um, I've got an error on here, so let me change this. Uh, coming in at number 19, yeah, let me make a correction here. I have two albums at number 20 here, so let me just correct that really quick. I'm a big fan of international music and seen a few bands in concert. Oh, Tortoise, by the way, I almost saw, I was standing in line at a club, and there was a huge line, and I knew, the, the doors opened late, uh, they were late letting everybody in, and I knew the capacity of that club, it could hold about 200 people, and there was about 200 people in front of me, so I said, you know, I don't want to stand here for an hour, walk up and be told that they just sold out. So I left. But anyway, I almost saw Tortoise. I would have really liked to have seen that show. But anyway, coming in at number 19 as a uh, international act is Baba Mall. The album Missing You. And this is, um, he is a, Sen he's from Senegal. And most of his albums combine traditional African music with, uh, with rock and roll. So Senegal, if you don't know your geography, it's West Africa right on the coast, not far from Cape Verde. 
And this is a, a return to a more traditional style, and it was produced by John Leckie. So John Leckie did the first Stone Roses album, and he's worked with XTC and Radiohead. Uh, John Leckie, top-notch producer, and he produced this, and I don't have a lot of information on the instrumentation, uh, but they use a lot of traditional African instruments here, and yeah, and he sings it in a very specific dialect from Senegal, I forget what that dialect of that language is called, but Bob Amal is one of the uh, stars of African music, and I really like this album, Missing You. It's just, um, uh, there are some upbeat percussive songs, but most of them are just acoustic, almost ballads, and really beautiful singing. So, number 19, Baba Mall, Missing You. Coming in at number 18 is the album that I inserted when I dropped Stephen Malcolmus. I had done a reaction to this band and I have grown to love them. This is my first rap album on here. Cannibal Ox, The Cold Vein, from Harlem, New York. And I was already a fan of the producer, LP, but I had never heard Cannibal Ox before. And uh, I love this album. It's really good. They're really great wordsmiths and the samples that LP puts on there and, and the two singers. Really good stuff. Um, yeah, if you haven't heard this album, I really recommend it. Uh, really, really interesting, interesting lyrics. Coming in at number 17, one of my favorite bands. This is a really lo-fi album. But it's The Velvet Underground, The Bootleg Series Volume 1, The Quine Tapes. This is Robert Quine, who later would go on to play guitar for Lou Reed. If you've not heard the song The Blue Mask, man, that's some nasty, dirty guitar. But at the time, he was just a young guy, and he would follow them around with a cassette recorder. And these are audience recordings, so they're of bootleg quality. But there's a lot of songs that were never captured by anybody else. This is 1969 at three different venues. It's a triple disc, and it's quite enjoyable. Um, very lo-fi, but the Velvet Underground Live, there's not that many documents. So not only is it an, is it an important album, but it's quite listenable, and there, I think there's a 28-minute version of Sister Ray <laughs> on here. Uh, but just, uh, I love the Velvet Underground, one of my favorite bands. And so here's a uh, officially released bootleg. And then my very last album, coming in at number 16, is another primarily instrumental post-rock band. We mentioned Tortoise earlier. This is an album I discovered about a year ago, before I started the channel, but still quite recent. And that is a band from Olympia, Washington called Unwound, Leaves Turn Inside You. This is a double disc, but it doesn't get tiring. It's a really great, great instrumental with some vocals on some songs. Really dark, uh, really great instrumental post-rock. And they would go on to disband the following year. So this was their final album, and it was uh, their highest rated. It's uh, number nine on Rachel Music. Really great album, if you haven't heard it. Uh, they're not an extremely popular band, but Unwound, Leaves Turn Inside You. So that's it. All right, I've got to add one addendum because you could see in that video that I got off that I had two albums at uh, the same rating. I only did 14 albums on here, so I'm going to jump on and do my true number 16. And let's go ahead and bring up this spreadsheet and try to get this corrected here. Uh, I said I had two number 20s, I think. So 20 was Bob Amal, 19 was Cannibal Ox. 18, The Velvet Underground, 17, Unwound, and my number 16 from Austin, Texas, Spoon, Girls Can Tell.
early Spoon album. I love this. Brett Daniels is one of my favorite singers. And you're probably already familiar with this band, so not much I can tell you about them. But uh, yeah, Girls Can Tell, some really, really um, great songs on here. Big fan of Spoon. And uh, like I say, I, I don't think I can tell you anything about them. But when I was listening to this album, I noticed uh, what is it that makes Spoon so unique? And I think I put my finger on it. I think they have a really stripped down drum kit. Uh, the drummer sounds like he's playing a very simple, simple set, and it gives it a uh, little bit of a, um, just a touch of amateur quality that's really endearing, but everything's well produced and well sung, so I just feel like that rhythm section to Spoon really marks them and gives them a signature sound. So, so that's, that's it. it. We're going to uh, do 15 through 1 on a part 2 episode. So let me know what your favorites are, and when I drop part two, I'll put a Spotify playlist on there as well. So thanks for joining me on the channel. If you like what I'm doing here, a senior reacting to 21st century music, hit the like or subscribe button. As we say here in Mexico, buen dia.